Well, hello, and welcome to episode two of my nostalgia series. So we are back with the nostalgia bin, really, is what it is. It's got so many memories in here. So in case you missed it, I made a video, I think back in August, where I read through some of my old Buffy fan fiction. It's bad, it's hilarious. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have it linked down below or up top here somewhere. So that was episode one. That was kind of my kickoff video for my little nostalgia series that I wanna make here. And basically what I'll be doing in these episodes is just kind of revisiting my old writing, reading some of my old writing, my old journals, all of the things that I am nostalgic for, I want to kind of revisit them and share them with you guys. As embarrassing and humiliating as it may be, I'm gonna share some of that stuff with you. Today I haven't even quite decided what I want to read, but I'm gonna go through my bin. I think I'm gonna continue with some old fan fiction. I definitely have a lot of like band fan fiction. I was definitely a big Green Day and Good Charlotte fan, and I'm pretty sure I have a bunch of fan fiction from those bands. So I'm gonna read through some of that today. These, as a sneak peek, are some of my old journals. Here's one from when I, for sure, this has gotta be 2002, 2001. I was very into Michael Jackson. We're not at those episodes yet. That's, I mean, we're gonna need some time to work up to that because my old diaries and journals are so embarrassing. I really miss having a journal with a lock. I had so many of these. Like, dude, I got this from Scholastic, okay? I was so weird. Okay, no, I'm not, no. This is my little, um, tin where I would keep all of my diary keys. This is my little keychain. What is it, a thousand dollar bill? And also, ooh, a fortune. Let's see what I decided to keep here. Life is about making some things happen, not waiting for something to happen. I also, for a brief moment, wrote some Malcolm in the Middle fan fiction. I, I guess I was really into Malcolm in the Middle, anyway. I found it. Oh my God, I found it, okay. Oh no. What is even happening with these pages? Okay, so I think I'm gonna read my Green Day fan fiction. We'll start with a little bit of that. <laughs> oh, gosh. oh yeah. Some of these titles are like, what? And I also wrote, I just found my Fallout Boy fan fiction. This is so disorganized. I have no idea. Oh God, I'm sweaty. Okay, so we got the goods. I have, I'm gonna start with this one. And look at, like, look, look at this. What have I done here? For a while I really liked drawing bunnies. There was this like little cartoon bunny that I would draw all the time. And apparently I would just leave my um, stories out and about because my mom wrote some of her own notes on, on top. So, okay. My original, my first Green Day fan fiction and then my other Green Day fan fiction. The same title, but it's a different story. I want to say I was 12 when I wrote this because 12 is the year that I really got into Green Day and that's when I was doing a lot of my, you know, fan fiction writing. So I want to say I was 12. So this is 2002. Is that 20 years ago? Oh my god. That's gross. <laughs> oh my god, I feel ancient. This is 20 years old. Ew, I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Mm. Ew. Time. Okay, so the title is Nice Guys Finish First. They have a song called Nice Guys Finish Last, and this is, you know, a whole play on that. Anyway, okay. <clears throat> so I do kind of remember this story. This was when Billy Joe, Trey, and Mike were all in high school. And my little OC was obviously a girl at the high school that Billy Joe wanted to ask the prom or something like that, go to the prom with. Billy Joe Armstrong, get your lazy butt out of bed. You're gonna be late for school again. Miss Armstrong yelled from upstairs. Billy Joe stirred, covering his face with his sheets. A few minutes later, his mother opened the door to his small room. Billy Joe, how old are you? She asked, opening the curtains, letting the warm sunlight fill his room. Billy Joe sighed and mumbled, 18 from under the covers. Exactly, his mother said, pulling the sheets off of him. Name one other 18 year old as irresponsible as you are, his mother said, crossing her arms. Billy Joe thought for a moment. Trey, he replied with a smirk. She shook her head, smiling slightly. Get ready for school, she said, throwing some clean clothes at him before turning around to exit his room. He sat up in his bed just enough so he could glance at the radio alarm clock he had on his dresser. He had 10 minutes to get to school. He groaned and popped back down on his messy bed. Hitching his backpack onto one shoulder, Willie Joe grabbed his beat up skateboard and dashed through the front door. For heaven's sake, please be good today, his mother yelled before he slipped on his headphones and hopped onto his skateboard. He shook his head and smiled, turning on his CD player. Let me know if any of you guys had one of those portable CD players and you'd walk to school with it and it would skip because you weren't you didn't have enough money to buy the like non-skipping one the one that with like this the, the shock proof or whatever i i had a terrible cd player it was like such a cheap one it was one that my neighbor had gotten me for christmas one year terrible 
so bad, but I loved it because I could listen to my CDs on the way to school. Okay. The bell rang and hundreds of students began making their way to their classes. Mike shook his head and glanced down at his watch. Again, Trey asked, walking towards Mike. Mike tapped his watch. Third time this week. I'm telling you, that guy's gonna be late for his own effing wedding, Trey joked. His bleach blonde hair spiked at odd angles. They snorted, walking into class just as everyone settled down for attendance. Is that still a thing? I miss school. Miss Granger. Oh, this must have been Harry Potter times. Miss Granger took a sheet of paper off her desk and put on her reading glass. She cleared her throat to get everyone's attention and began calling out names. Courtney, she called. Here, Timothy. Right here, he yelled from the back of the room. Mike? Yep. Frank Edwin, right? Here, Trey yelled quickly, cutting her off. Miss Granger was the only teacher that still called him that, even though he'd told her a million times he preferred Trey. A few guys from the back of the room laughed. Even one or two loser sneezes were heard. Settle down, boy, settle down, Granger said calmly. She opened her mouth to call the next name on the list, but was interrupted when the door swung open and Billy Joe walked inside. Billy Joe Armstrong, Miss Granger said, glaring at him over the rim of her glasses. Present, Billy Joe Grant had made his way to a seat between Trey and Mike. Well, better late than never, I always say. She put a check mark next to his name and cleared her throat again. I don't understand how you can be so late for school all the time, dude. You live so close to the school, Mike whispered as Miss Granger continued to take attendance. Nah, man, I'm not late. I'm just really early for second period. Billy Joe smirked. They all chuckled. That was chapter one, apparently. Chapter two. The three of them walked down the hall, passing by a few guys from the football team. <laughs> Triple T at 12 o'clock, Billy Joe said, rolling his eyes. Triple T is what they like to call them. <laughs> Todd, Tim, and Ted, your average high school quarterback, lineman, and tight end. All three of them were brothers, so muscle-bound they could barely walk straight. They think they're God's gift to women. Too bad their brains are in their biceps. I feel like I heard that line somewhere. Like, there's no way I made that up. Like, I didn't come up with that. I will not take credit for that line. I am sure I heard that somewhere. I'm not that good. Hello ladies, Todd, the star quarterback, teased as he walked by. The three of them laughed hysterically. Billy Joe turned around, fists clenched. Trey and Mike held him back. Let it go, man, Trey said, turning him around. They're two times your size, dude, Mike added. I'm telling you, man, one of these days, Billy Joe said, storming off toward his locker. He was tired of the same routine. He'd let it go for too long. Billy Joe fumbled with his lock, trying to open it. Mike and Trey soon joined him by his locker. Throwing a few books inside, Billy Joe grabbed his skateboard and was about to close his locker when Mike nudged him on the side. What? He asked irritably, closing his locker and locking it. Look, Mike replied, nodding toward the girl walking down the hall. Me? Billy Joe and Trey both turned around to watch Jade Callahan walk past them. I really liked the name Jade. I was obsessed with that name for a long time. I remember when I was a kid, I wanted that to be my daughter's name. Now, I still like the name, but I don't want to have kids. Okay. Billy Joe and Trey both turned around to watch Jade Callahan walk past them. Light brown hair flowing gently, light blue eyes fixed on the direction she was walking. Billy Joe gave a little sigh. He's had the biggest crush on her since the sixth grade. She was always part of the cool group. Billy Joe felt like she didn't belong with the cool group though. She seemed so different from the rest of them. She didn't belong with the geeks or nerds either. It's like she needed a group all her own. Stop. You think she knows we exist? Trey asked jokingly. Doubt it, Mike replied chuckling. I think I'm gonna ask her to prom, Billy Joe said as casually as he could. Trey and Mike stopped laughing. Dude, we have like five days till prom. You gotta get her to know you exist first then you gotta get her to actually like you, Mike said, knowing it wouldn't happen in a million years. I could always try. You've been trying for six years, dude, Mike pointed out. Billy Joe sighed again as the three of them turned to watch her walk out of sight. I wouldn't even bother, man, Trey said, looking at her, then back at Billy Joe. She's way out of your league. Trey was right. Billy Joe knew she'd never settle for a guy like him. He'd give anything for her to prove him wrong, but it didn't look like that was going to happen. I'm going to go to Jimmy's for a while, Billy Joe said as he hopped on his skateboard. All right, and try not to be late tomorrow, Mike called as Billy Joe took off toward the front door and was out of sight. Chapter three. These chapters were so short compared to the chapters I'm currently writing in my novel. Chapter three. Jimbo, Billy Joe grinned as he walked into the small pet shop. Bill, how's it going, man? Jim asked, smiling as they did their secret handshake. Jim was a friend of Billy Joe's father. He'd been going to the pet shop his whole life, even after his father died eight years ago. He never stopped going. Over the years, he looked up to Jim as though he were his father. Can't complain, Billy Joe replied, walking toward a small cage at the back of the store. Hey Rex, how's it going, boy? He whispered to the small puppy, petting his head. Oh. Rex stood on his hind legs, licking Billy Joe's fingers profoundly. That's some profound licking. <laughs> Billy Joe chuckled as he walked toward a huge fish tank. Jim walked to the back of the store to join him. I see, and the love life? Jim asked, smirking. Billy Joe sighed and tapped the glass, startling a few fish. Non-existent, he replied. He raked a hand through his shaggy black hair. Jade had been on his mind the whole trip to Jim's. Jim's smirk turned to a sympathetic frown. Jade, Jim asked knowingly. Billy Joe had told Jim... Jesus Christ, <laughs> so many J names. Billy Joe had told Jim about Jade many times. Jim was like the wise old man sitting in a rocking chair with a tobacco pipe in his mouth. Yep, Billy Joe replied, taking a seat on an empty stool. Still haven't worked up the balls to talk to her? Jim asked, taking a seat beside Billy Joe. I don't know. It's like every time I try to talk to her, I get tongue tied. I see, Jim replied, chuckling lightly, thinking back to when he was in high school. What's so funny? Billy Joe asked, raising an eyebrow, smiling. So that's all I got for this story. I'm sad because I know that I have written more for this story, but I'm pretty sure I've lost the print 
printed out pages and I have definitely lost the original digital document. So what I remember from this story in terms of plot was I know there was a scene in a diner where like the triple T guys were there and I think Billy Joe and I think Mike and Trey were there. I know Billy Joe was there for sure and there was kind of, you know, a bit of an altercation and Billy Joe kind of stood up to them and it was like a whole thing and it was great and I think Jade was there and uh, I don't know, I think she was impressed. And then eventually they were supposed to kind of start talking and then fall in love and, and it was supposed to end in them going to the prom and it, it was just supposed to be cute. I mean, it definitely reads like fan fiction, but it's kind of fun, you know? Like I feel like, I feel like it's an easy read and it's just cute. I don't hate it. I think it's adorable. Okay, now this. I feel like I wrote the bulk of my Green Day fanfiction kind of near the beginning of when I really became obsessed with them. So I feel like it's all within. I mean, maybe this is 2003, maybe. So for this story, Billy Joe and the band, they're they're older. I think, I don't know, they're maybe in their, probably like in their 20s or something, but they are, they're, they're like a band. So in this story, they are Green Day. This was like pre-Green Day, but this is like, they are Green Day. I don't think I'm gonna read this. <gasps> Wait, I found another printout of the original story and it has a little bit more of that scene. What's so funny, Billy Joe asked, raising his eyebrows, smiling. What? Oh, it's nothing. You just reminded me of myself when I was in high school. I went through the same thing you're dealing with. All the animals in the shop seemed to quiet down and listen to their conversation. So what did you do? I didn't do anything, Jim replied, his smile fading. What do you mean you didn't do anything? I chickened out. I never told her how I felt. We graduated, went our separate ways, never saw her again. He paused, swallowed. Sometimes the thoughts of what if and what could have been keep me up at night, you know? I'm always wondering if things would have been different if I had just sucked it up and told her how I felt. Billy Joe's expression turned sympathetic as he listened carefully. Don't make the same mistake I did, Bill. You don't want to be 56 and still wondering what could have been. Talk to her. What do you got to lose? Billy Joe smiled appreciatively. He was right. Thanks, Jim. Anytime, Slick, Jim replied as they embraced in a father-son hug. At that moment, there was a twinge of pain in Billy Joe's chest. He really missed his father at times like these. All right, I'm out, Billy Joe said, getting up. He walked toward Rex's cage. See you later, buddy, he whispered, scratching the puppy behind his ears. He turned back to Jim as he picked up his skateboard. Thanks again, man. No problem. Hey, good luck. Jim called as Billy Joe opened the door. With a smile and a small wave, he was gone. Jim sighed and turned to Rex. Be glad you never have to go to high school. Rex tilted his head, confused. Jim chuckled and made his way to the cash register. So that was that scene, but there's definitely another chapter somewhere. It exists. Okay, now onto this story. Um, chapter one is called Sugar, Please. Billy Joe and Trey sat on a bench waiting for Mike to return with the coffee. Billy's green eyes wandered up to the sky while Trey's remained focused on the woman who had just walked by them. He grinned as he nudged Billy with his elbow and nodded in her direction. Billy Joe shook his head, erasing his thoughts. He looked at the woman walking in the distance. You're gross, he said, rolling his eyes, leading his head back to stare up at the sky once more. You want to know what's really weird, though? I'm almost positive I wrote this one after I wrote this one, but this one has better formatting. Like, I feel like I was... Like, I feel like I formatted the dialogue so much better in this one. This one is just bad. Nothing, Mike said, walking by them, looking at the stores on the other side of the street. Billy looked at him. What do you mean, nothing? He asked. Mike walked up to him, shaking his head. This is Toronto, right? There's gotta be an effing coffee time or something around here somewhere, he said angrily, stuffing his hands in his pockets as he kicked a small rock. Jesus. What does a person have to do to find a decent cup of coffee around here? He asked rhetorically. Mike loved his coffee. There was no denying it. Billy Joe got up and began walking down the street. Where are you going? Trey asked. To look for some coffee, Billy replied. Mike and Trey began to follow. Who's the king? Billy said, nodding arrogantly as he opened the door to second cup. The smell of freshly brewed coffee heightened their senses. Huh? Billy Joe's eyes skimmed the entire room, looking for empty seats. He found three by the window and began walking toward them. Trey followed while Mike went to go get the coffee. Billy Joe sat on the first chair closest to the window and stared out at the cars passing by. Trey sat down and shook his head. What's wrong with you, man? He asked. What? Billy asked, turning around to look at Trey. What are you looking for out there? It's like you're here, but you're not. You got this kind of distant look in your eyes. Trey replies, squinting at him. Because outside is so beautiful, Billy replied, turning his attention to the cars once more. Hi, good afternoon. How may I help you? Diane... <sighs> I used my own name again. The shame, I had none of it. Um, Diane asked kindly. It took <laughs> it took her about three seconds to notice who it was. She took a small step back. Mike smiled, knowing that she knew who he was. Hi, Diane, he said, reading her name tag. She glanced down at her tag and smiled. Her blonde hair... I wanted to be blonde and blue-eyed so bad. Her blonde hair was in a loose knot at the top of her head, held together with two black chopsticks with a few loose tendrils. Dude, if you watch episode one where I read my Buffy fanfiction, tell me this isn't the same the exact same thing. Tell me I don't love the word tendrils. This was my go-to hairstyle description. Up in a messy bun, held together with whatever, with tendrils. Wow. <sighs> with a few loose tendrils hanging from the side of her, stop, the side of her soft, flawless face. 
Jesus. She wore her work uniform, which was a reddish brown kind of apron that had second cup written on the front in big gray letters, with pockets at the front where she kept her little booklet of orders and a gray t-shirt and a dark red visor. Jesus Christ, okay. In case you need to know every single detail. I don't even know that I've ever been inside a second cup. I have no idea if that is actually the uniform. Maybe it is, who knows. He glanced over at Billy Joe, who was still staring out the window. He turned back to her. Uh, can you bring it to that table over there? He asked, pointing to the table where Billy Joe and Trey sat. Dan looked over to the table. Sure, she said, smiling. Mike nodded. Thanks, he said as he began walking toward Billy Joe and Trey. Mike sat down in the seat beside Billy Joe. I saw a hot girl today, Mike said to Billy Joe. Where? Trey asked, rising up quickly in his chair, looking around. Mike looked at Billy Joe. Hot girl, he repeated, making sure Billy heard him. Dude, don't bother. He's too busy getting lost in the beauty of the outside scenery, Trey said, doing sarcastic quote signs with his fingers. Mike looked at Billy Joe, still staring out the window. You okay, dude? Mike asked. Billy didn't answer. He heard him, but frankly, Billy had lost interest in girls. He was so focused on the tour that his social life was going downhill and fast. Until he meets Diane. <laughs> Obviously. Mike looked at Diane, who was heading toward them with their coffee. Quick, here she comes, Mike said, sitting up straighter in his chair, fixing the napkin holder. Here you go, Diane said, placing their coffees on the table. Diane's gentle voice cut through Billy's thoughts, and he turned to look at her. His eyes fixed <laughs> Stop. His eyes fixed on her sweet sea blue eyes. He looked up at her admiringly. Thank you, he said, gazing at her. <laughs> Oh my God, he thought to himself. She smiled and nodded as she walked away back to the cash register. His eyes followed her until she was out of sight. What happened to outside? Trey asked mockingly, smirking at him. Billy Joe threw a little pack of sugar at him. Shut up, he said, looking at Diane, who was talking to a guy at the cash register. Mike noticed him staring. Her name's Diane, he said, smiling at him. How do you know you talked to her? Billy asked a little bit jealously. Dude, it says on her name tag, Trey said, rolling his eyes. Why don't you go talk to her? Mike asked, nudging him in the elf. Nudging him in the elbow with his elbow, it, or maybe he nudged Billy's elbow, I don't know. It's been a while since Billy talked to a girl, and they all knew that, but lately nothing seemed to appeal to him, except maybe her. <laughs> this is so bad! Why is this one worse than the first one? Well, I can't just go up to her, Billy said, looking at her. Suddenly he got an idea. He began to open each pack of sugar and put it in his cup. Mike and Trey watched him quickly dump the packs of sugar in his cup. What are you doing? Trey asked, looking at him as if he were going crazy. Diane began to walk by them to another table. Uh, hi, Billy said nervously. Diane turned and smiled. Hi, can I help you? She asked sweetly. His insides crumbled with emotions. Uh, yeah, can I get, um, more of these little packs of sugar, please? He asked, giving her a bashful smile. Of course, she nodded and headed back to the counter. Billy smiled as he watched her walk away. Smooth, dude, real smooth. Trey said, nodding sarcastically. Shut up, man. Let the guy do his shit, Mike said, hitting Trey in the back of the head. Okay, shut up. She's coming, Billy Joe said as he sat up straighter. As he stood up straighter, he shook the table and knocked over Mike's cup. Shit, man, that was still full, Mike said, lifting up the cup and getting up quickly before any coffee could reach him. Diane began to giggle. That's so weird. Why would I just stand there and giggle? <laughs> Mike, Trey, and Billy Joe looked at her. Mike smiled. Sorry, he said, looking at her. She smiled. Oh, it's no problem. It happens all the time, she said, snorting. Dude, it's not that funny. Billy smiled. She has the cutest laugh, he thought to himself. Diane took a small towel from her front pocket and began soaking up the coffee. With her free hand, she took out three small packs of sugar. Enjoy, she said, handing Billy Joe the sugar. He reached out for the packs of sugar and his hand touched hers. Her hands were warm and soft. He quickly retrieved his hand. Thanks, he said. He was acting like he was in sixth grade again. She finished cleaning up the spilled coffee. I'll get you another cup, she said as she quickly walked back to the counter. Mike sat down again. Dan returned with a new cup of coffee and handed it to Mike. She smiled at Trey. Billy Joe, ew, no, stop. Billy noticed Trey smiling at her deviously. <laughs> She glanced over at Billy Joe. So you guys getting ready for the tour with Blink? She asked, smiling. Billy Joe's eyes widened. Uh, yeah, you know about the tour? He asked, smiling. Yeah, I'm going to the show, she said, fixing her apron. You are? Trey asked, smiling. There was so much smiling in fan fiction. She looked at Trey, yep, she replied. Trey's deep sea blue eyes pierced hers. He smiled. Good girl. <laughs> Apparently I had a little bit of a praise kink even back then. Okay. Mike looked at Billy Joe and watched as he turned green with jealousy. He looked back at Diane and Trey. Not a no! <laughs> I did not write this. Ew. So Trey said, good girl. And then Diane says, not all the time. Ew. She said as she turned around and began walking back to the counter. I guess this was supposed to be like the whole conflict thing. Trey was also supposed to be going after the girl. You can't just keep it in your pants, can you? Billy asked, shaking his head, a bit of anger in his voice. Dude, that was, that was keeping it in your pants. Ew. Okay, this is actually painful to read, so I'm not gonna read much more of it. But basically what happens is they finish having their coffee and then the guys leave. So in chapter two, Billy Joe goes back to the cafe where Diane works and orders a cup of coffee and she brings in like three extra packs of sugar, blah, blah, blah. And then they talk a little bit and then he asks if she wants to go for a walk later in the evening. So they make that plan. And then chapter three, it seems like I only write three chapters of things, but basically it's him going to her place to pick her up for the, the walk. 
Stop. Okay, chapter three. Billy Joe took a deep breath as she returned back into view. She wore a black three-quarter length sleeve shirt with black jeans. Her hair was up in a high ponytail with a few loose what? tendrils hanging from the side of her face. I'm honestly gonna get tendrils tattooed on my body or I'm gonna have it engraved on my tombstone. I don't, I don't know, but this word is apparently very significant to me and my writing, tendrils. So yeah, they go on a walk in the park and they just start talking a little bit. And that's the last I have of that. I honestly don't even remember what I was thinking like for this story. I don't know that I thought very far ahead in this story. I'm sure there must've been something about the tour and them going on tour. I'm sure there was something like that. But as you can see, there's no real plot here. The plot was really just hook up with Billy Joe, you know? So of these two stories, I definitely like the one where they're in high school more. I feel like it was more fun it was just it was cuter and I and I remember more of what was supposed to happen so yeah I think I've definitely sufficiently embarrassed myself enough for one episode so we're gonna leave it at that I was obsessed with Green Day I was obsessed with Billy Joe let me know if you also went through a really intense Green Day phase I still they're still one of my favorite bands but back in 2002 when I first got really really into them it was like they were my world I went to go see the American Idiot musical I've seen them live I think twice now they were a significant part of my life at a time in my life that was like one of my favorite times in my life so they're definitely very very special to me and please if you have written any Green Day fan fiction let me know let me know I'm not alone out here okay you don't need to share it with me but just let me know that you were also there that you also wrote some Green Day fan fiction thank you so much for watching if you got to the end of this video comment down below stay gold because you are golden and yeah I'll see you in the next one